The sounds of cascading waves and a distant feeling of ill at ease that washes over your calm is what greets you whenever winter's gate by insomnia begins its 40 minute long journey. The journey that is similarly joined by the Vikings that are heading towards some uh, islands that are off the coast of Ireland in order to really set up the plot for this. A journey that seems very ill-advised, something that should not be done based upon the forthcoming winter. Something that really doesn't seem like that this journey is going to have a very pleasant outcome. Insomnium themselves really had their own outcome in order to really, I guess, manage the fate of. This was a very different idea by comparison to what they'd done in the past. and. Really, many felt that they could handle this sort of thing, considering they already were benefactors of longer songs, some reaching the 9-minute mark and going above the 10-minute mark, but 40, that's always one that's a bit harrowing, you know, whenever you do that full-length 40-minute long cut or that epic song. And this being based off of a story that was uh, really released and published in Scandinavia, I believe in Finland in 2007 and 2008, and really everything that they've done to sort of accommodate the music alongside the story uh, really is kind of a sight to behold. They decided to sort of go full out, you know, all in with this, and I think it's really paid off for them considering it does give it a, a real marking of legitimacy right off of the bat, and it already paints intrigue and interest. The music itself, though, it doesn't stay that calm or that, you know, that, that swirl of cascading uh, you know, waves for very long. It instead starts to launch into what Insomnium is known best for. Their breed of melodic death metal is one that has a definite sort of darker edge to it than what you expect whenever you hear the terms melodic death or mellow death. Instead, Whenever you hear those words, you may think of in flames and soil work, dark tranquility at the gates, bands of those distinction. But this is one that actually carries a little bit more of a doom overtone with it. One that certainly paints that emotion very, very briskly, but also very well throughout their compositions. And this is no different. This is one that has a certain resemblance of sort of pseudo-celebration, either that or at least of pseudo-everything is going to be okay, considering no doubt that the characters in this story that are taking this ill-fated voyage believe that nothing could possibly go wrong. What could possibly go wrong, Bubsy said from the distance, and then all of a sudden he remembered what franchise he was a part of. <laughs> wow, that's a really awful and obscure joke. But at any rate, as this continues, what you start to note is the swirling pattern and the up and down notion that this is able to deliver. Whenever this needs to be powerful, it is powerful with a new sense of real strength that we've not heard really in prior Insomnium releases. There is something about this album, the tone of it, the overall body and register of it, perhaps the mixing of it. Oh, wait a minute. Something does seem a bit different indeed. They sound... Uh, they sound larger than life. They sound like they are producing and telling this story and is in a powerful tongue. But at the same time, whenever this goes downward, whenever this descends, whenever this becomes a little bit more fearful, either that or a little bit more discouraging, distraught, every emotion is brilliantly painted by the music that surrounds. The keyboards that you hear are tackled by the Swallow of the Sun's Keyman, and once again, I mean, this is a, a collaboration that's been going on for quite some time, but it is painted with beauty and majesty on this release. It really showcases the power of the keys whenever it comes to the mellow death sound for one, but also Insomnium's trademark blend of it. And also, you have to really marvel a little bit in the power that is really shifted within the 20 to 30 minute mark of this track, considering it's able to go from sort of that haughty, you know, celebration, either that or, well, I wouldn't say celebration, more like a, a fearful uh, respite. Uh, to really descending into something that's a little bit more chaotic. Really, what I mean is that the upting and the, and the down tick of this is really starting to sound a bit familiar. Almost as though this has a lot of drawbacks to the past. It harkens back to an album, one in the middle portion of the 1990s, that feels so damned familiar, down to the fact that Winter's Gate is 40 minutes and 2 seconds, just like that same album. Crimson was the title of that album. It was performed by the band Edge of Sanity. 
It's considered to be a heavy metal classic, one of the absolutely essential works of extreme metal that metal fans should consume. Those who haven't have certainly missed something and should certainly engage with it. And Dan Swano's work alongside of Mike Ackerfeet from Opeth handling some guest vocals, definitely giving this dynamic, dynamic song, this one track, a certain sense of almost invincibility. Winter's Gate possesses that same almost a passionate invincibility, almost as though Dan Suano himself is somehow touching this track. Well, that's because he is. Dan Suano handles the mixing and the mastering on this album, and no doubt has had some tips and some great advice to share to Insomnium as to how to make this work, and work well, and work it did. Wow! The emotion that you feel whenever you hear some of these riffs sort of coalesce and cascade over you is absolutely breathtaking. It can cause not only the hair on your arms to stand up, it can also cause tears. The emotion is actually very real with this. <coughs> and for an album where traditionally it is mainly known for the sort of diversity between the, the growls and the cleans, both are able to provide that emotional sort of connection as opposed to that disconnect that sometimes feels very naked and empty whenever you listen to an album that just doesn't seem to reach you. This one reaches you. And it does so both within the music itself, the vocals itself, and just the overall package and how this song flows. It flows with majesty. It does not go too far one direction or the next. It's very balanced and has a grand sense of itself. It flows like a storybook. It flows as a story should. So those that pro uh, try to do concept records sometimes are ill-fated in doing so, considering they jilt around their compositions, they jilt around their narrative, they're not able to maintain balance between the two. Winter's Gate does not suffer from that fate, instead, it is an album that has mastered it. Is it simply because of Swano's, you know, touch? I doubt it. I think with Winter's Gate, Insomnium has reached a songwriting peak that they've been slowly but surely trying to get their, themselves to for quite some time. Even if some uh, past albums have underwhelmed you, this is certainly a band that was always on the rise and was always trying to do something a bit different and now finally took the leap and it's paid off. This is an album that ends with the same calm that it begins and it almost provides a suitable haunt whenever those final seconds tick by. Because it gives you that feeling, that ill-fated feeling, that nothing good has come from this. This is an album that is really kind of once every generation. We've had many albums that have really boasted long track times, one song being the entirety of the disc, you know, all of those treasured ideas that perhaps we haven't seen or have Dan Swanner to thank for, considering uh, Crimson and Crimson 2 both really paved the way for such a thing to become Vogue, even though it had been attempted prior to that. But this is an album that's once in a generation because of its echoes back to that past, its echoes to Crimson itself. The balance that's really encountered, the riffing, is just at its peak. I don't think I've heard some better patterns or better construction as far as songwriting is concerned from Insomnium within their entire career. And that's bold. And that's something that makes this a generational album, one that, instead of 15 to 20 years down the line, those metal fans talking about Crimson, they may be talking about Winter's Gate instead and speaking about the legend that is. Legend doesn't always necessarily mean that your album is the most popular, sells the most, and is considered to be this groundbreaking anthem. It's not going to get you in Rolling Stone magazine. It's not going to get you on all of those lists by people that just want to toss in you know, a mud vein or a slipknot because the record label you know, maybe gets a couple extra bucks out of it. Now, this is instead something that is based around the composition itself, based around the piece itself, based around the timing and everything. And this is one that certainly has that same resplendent value that Crimson does the first time you hear it. 98 out of 100, this is as close to perfection as it gets. I was tempted to give it the 100. Why didn't I? Because it's already going to be an interesting year whenever it comes to December. I'm already going to have to listen to this again, which will, oh, 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 what a joy. It'll be a joy. I'll be listening to it again many, many times. But I'll be listening to this again and comparing it with the other two. Vector's brand new release, as well as Arctis by Esau. So as of right now, we have a three-way dance 
at the top of Album of the Year 2016. What are your thoughts and feelings on this? Do you feel the same? Is this something that is willing to be up in there in that pantheon of greatness for 2016? Let me know in the comments below. My name is Cover Killer Nation, and I will talk to you guys next time.